Hello and welcome to this lesson from the GTSE PE portal. Today we're going to be taking a look at blood vessels in and around our body. Now they make up part of our cardiovascular system, which is the combination of our heart, which acts as the pump, the blood, which is being pumped, and the network, which are the vessels, which carry that blood around our body to where it's needed. We've got three different types of vessels. We've got arteries, veins, and capillaries. To start with, we are going to look at the artery. And the first thing I'm going to say is look at what it starts with. It's an A. A for away. Arteries carry blood away from the heart. Okay, arteries carry blood away from the heart. What that means, well, it gives us an indication of what it's going to be built like because it's always carrying blood away from the heart. If the heart's just pumped and contracting, blood's just been forced out of it, it's going to be traveling at high pressure. It's going to be traveling at high speed. That will tell us a little bit about what the artery needs to be built like in order to carry blood at high speed and high pressure. And the first thing is that it has a very thick wall. Okay, so this area here, okay, the wall of the artery, very thick. It's there to expand, it's quite elastic in nature. It expands with the pressure, but it's thick enough to withstand it so it doesn't tear, rupture, and blood is, is lost. Because it's so thick, the interior of it, or the lumen, if I just put here, is actually quite narrow in its diameter. So it's quite thin across the center of it. What this means is that there's less space for the blood to flow in. And if, there's anything, if, if anything is ever in something of little space, the pressure goes up. So we've got thick walls to cope with higher pressures, and we've also got thin and narrow lumens to increase that pressure further. Because blood is squashed into these vessels, it's squashed into these tubes, which means it's gonna be forced through at high speed. So even though the heart pumps you know, up towards the top of our body, it's not gonna be long at all before that volume of blood reaches you know, the lower parts of our body. Because we've got thick walls which stretch, expand, and then come squishing back in to help push that blood even further, we've also got these narrow lumens to keep that pressure high, to keep that blood flow speed nice and quick. So that's our artery. They carry blood away from the heart. Typically, oxygenated blood. It's normally carrying blood that's just been oxygenated. A, an exception to that would be the pulmonary artery, which pumps deoxygenated blood from the heart up to the lungs. That's deoxygenated, but that's one of the, if not the only one, that you need to know of. So arteries carry blood away from the heart, thick walls, narrow lumen. The next one we're gonna look at is the vein. And what I'm gonna do here just underline that, I-N, or in, because veins carry, carry blood back in towards the heart. And this gives us an indication of what these are going to be built like. If blood's already been to the muscle, it's already been slowed down, it's already dissipated around the muscle fibres, and it's collected up a couple of nutrients, and it's gradually converged back into a vein, the blood's going to be going very slowly. So the vein needs to be built in a way that can cope with and deal with blood that's traveling at slow speeds and is at low pressure. The vein itself has got quite thin walls. It doesn't need to cope with high pressure like the arteries. So the walls can be thin. What this allows though is for lots of blood to be stored inside the vein. It's got this very wide lumen. There's lots of space inside of there. So when we're not exercising and we don't need blood to be cascading around our body really quickly, we actually almost have like deposits of blood. We almost have a, a blood reservoir inside of our veins, just waiting for the moment that we do actually need to start delivering blood around the body in higher quantities and volumes. The things which help that blood stay there are things called pocket valves. I'll just put this into the middle of that. Pocket valves. Now they work like, I always compare them to a Lucozade cap or a Lucozade bottle cap, where they're, sort of, they're locked into place and if you were to squeeze the bottle, then they open up, but as soon as the pressure drops, they, they recoil back into their original shape. 
Same thing with the pocket valves. When the heart pumps or blood pressure rises inside of the vein, they open up, blood is let through, it travels through that section. Then when pressure drops again, the valve closes, and blood pulls behind the pocket valve. Just like pockets in your trousers, you can hold stuff in, the pockets or the pocket valves inside the veins, they can hold blood. And that's the vein. The one thing which they do have which is a little bit different to an artery is something called smooth muscle. Let me put this in green here. It's a layer of very thin muscle, smooth muscle it's called, and it works by twitching or contracting ever so lightly or ever so slightly when we start to exercise. So our brain can signal to uh, our cardiovascular system that we need blood to get back to the heart nice and quickly so then it can get oxygen and get delivered around the body again. So that smooth muscle, let me drop that down here, smooth muscle. Smooth muscle. It's almost like a compression sleeve if you've injured your elbow or knee. You put that sleeve of elasticated tissue around it and it helps compress what's inside of it. Same thing with our smooth muscle. It's there to help to twitch and contract when we need blood flow and blood pressure to increase. It's there to twitch and contract and squeeze this reservoir of blood out of the veins, back to the heart, so it can travel around the body once again. And that's the vein. It carries blood into the heart. Arteries carry blood away from the heart. Last one then, we have over here, which is the capillary. This is the smallest one of the three, hence its size there, and it is in fact only one cell thick, both in lumen, I'll just put one CT, one cell thick, and in tissue around the edge. So it's just made up of just single cells connected together. And what that allows is for gaseous exchange. It means that oxygen and CO2, O2 and CO2, can swap in and out of this capillary nice and easily. Because they're thin, because they're so small, they can also get into every single part of our body. These are what deliver the blood where it needs to go. Arteries and veins, they're too big. Okay, they carry blood too quickly. It's almost like a motorway on the roads. You know, if you need to actually get somewhere specific, you need the A road, then the B road, then the country road, and then finally the actual street of where you're trying to get to. The capillaries are the streets. They take things right to the destination that they're, the, the right destination that that blood's trying to go. They're one cell thick, blood cells have to flow in them single file. And what that means is that every single blood cell inside of our system and inside of our body traveling around Every one of them is exposed to the muscle and has the opportunity to drop that oxygen off and to pick that carbon dioxide up. That's why capillaries are so essential inside of our body. We've also got loads of them. There's absolutely loads of capillaries. And the job that serves is if we've got an artery, one main artery, that's bringing down a whole, almost like a hose pipe worth of blood, and we've then got loads, hundreds of capillaries sprouting off the end of that, often described like a paintbrush. One thick handle, loads of bristles. It's going to divide that blood flow up and it's going to slow it down. Okay, so we've got nice slow blood flow, really close to the muscle, with blood cells in single file, oxygen and CO2 is, are obviously going to gaseous exchange where they need to. And that, oh, they are the three blood vessels. The artery, which carries blood away from the heart, narrow lumen, thick, elastic walls to carry blood at high pressure. We've got the veins, which have thin walls because they don't have to deal with very high pressures. They've got pocket valves inside and a wide lumen so it can store blood. And it's got that smooth muscle wrapped around it, which can twitch and contract to help push blood back to the heart when we start to exercise. Thirdly, and lastly, we have the capillary, very small. Lots of these sprout off into every single centimetre of our body, delivering oxygen, collecting CO2. They're one cell thick, both in their walls and in their lumen. So we've got that single file fashion of blood cells moving through them. And that is that. I hope you found that useful, and I hope to see you again soon.